beware of the suckers rally in the housing market. And just to give you guys an idea as to what's coming for us, let's take a look at what's going on over in Canada. Now you might be asking yourselves, Ron, why are we checking in on Canada's housing market? How's that going to impact us? Well, because they're going through a phase that we're going to be headed in real soon because they made a lot of decisions very similar to what happened here. Canada could be sitting on the biggest housing bubble of all time. That's according to one strategist who's warning that once it bursts, Canada could be thrown into a deeper recession than any have forecasted. Let's bring in Philip Colmar. He is a managing partner and global strategist at MRB Partners. He's coming to us today from Belleville, Ontario. Phil, good to see you. Walk us through the big takeaway here of what you're saying. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, the key here is, is uh, we've been monitoring it for some time, but the Canadian housing market um, it does have excessive house prices relative to the income. So when you're looking at that, that big headline about a housing bubble, what you really want to do is compare house prices to incomes. And Canada for some time has been escalating on that front, particularly uh, even before the pandemic, it was last decade, it had a, a cheap interest rate environment or a low interest rate environment owing to really problems south of the border. After their housing bust, they went through deleveraging, which meant they dampened down consumption and inflation, allowed interest rates to be very low. Bank of Canada followed suit, even though the crisis wasn't here. And that, that seduced a lot of home buyers into um, buying homes, at, uh, using those interest rates uh, to effectively buy homes and house prices to incomes surged. And through the pandemic, we got it again and uh, kicked it further up. So, uh, so we do have uh, pretty excessive house prices to incomes. And I'll, I'll turn it back, but, the, uh, but certainly underneath the surface, when you're looking at a housing bubble, the things you really do worry about is when you not only have house excessive home prices, but excessive leverage backing the whole system and Canada kind of is really off the charts on that front. And that's really where the concern comes in is uh, is on the leverage to, to income ratios is way north of where the U.S. was at its peak. Uh, makes uh, makes the U.S. look somewhat prudent, actually. Um, so it really has been seduced by low interest rates. You see how they mirror one bubble to the other? And like I said, guys, the situation is similar here. And Canada's housing market is making a turn for the worse. So right now, right here in our country, we're seeing less and less people pay for their credit card bills, their mortgages, all sorts of debts, rent. And they're looking at these loans and they're thinking like, we just can't afford it anymore, right? So what happens at that point? Well, they just stop paying. And what happens next? That affects your credit, especially when it's reported. This means that you won't be part of this huge shift in the housing market when everything just hits the fan. And you're gonna wanna be a part of it because you're gonna see panic in the housing market like never before. Granted, it happened back in 2008, but we're dealing with a completely different beast in 2023 all the way going into 2024. Now, before we take a trip back in time, make sure you drop a quick like on this video. We want a lot of people to go to the top with us on this entire thing. And believe me when I say that the money-making opportunities will be out of this world, guys. So yeah, help us out with the YouTube algorithm. Drop a quick like for the video. Also subscribe and turn on all notifications so that you don't miss out on any of these crucial updates that affect us. All right, guys, appreciate the love. Now let's go back in time for a second here. You see, after after the dot-com bubble burst, the Fed lowered interest rates from 3% down to the ones. Basically, they wanted people to take on loans so that the money could be spent and the economy could get back in shape. Now, even though this kind of worked, by 2006, low interest rates made the return on investment or government bonds and fixed deposits so unpopular that investors were looking for something else. In came the subprime mortgage loans where these banks would take mortgages, bundle together, and sell them as shares to investors. Now, I know you guys know what happened next, and I don't mean to give you guys a history lesson here, but it's important to understand how these cycles happen. These loans were given to people who had really low credit scores and incomes and just didn't meet the threshold, you know? And you would think to yourself, hey, that's okay, right? Even if the people defaulted, somebody else would take the house off their hands. And well, we all know that that didn't happen, right? We then saw the housing prices crash. And well, that's what we're waiting on, this prime opportunity to be ahead of this crash because it is for sure going to happen. And this is going to create a huge wealth transfer. And this is exactly why you need to prepare as this could very well happen after the second quarter of 2024, as banks are going to be left with no chance but to get rid of foreclosures. And if we're talking about price cuts, we're already seeing it in Canada. I mean, look at this, guys. The Canada Home Price Benchmark Index for single family houses fell for the third month in a row. In September, it went down by 1.3%. The month before that, it went down by 1.1%. The month prior 
prior to that, it went down by 0.5%. Are you guys seeing the pattern here? Things are picking up. And with the situation here at home, I mean, we've seen plenty of folks on these rate buy downs where home builders were willing to offer lower than normal interest rates. And like interest rates are what? Almost 8% right now. So people rush to get deals with 5%, 4.5% interest rates. But well, those don't last forever. Now, the same folks push themselves to get into a home where the interest will suddenly spike within just a short period of time. And since they've already miscalculated their budget, they're likely going to be feeling the pain of the actual interest rates in due time. And like I say, guys, this is going to crash our housing market as less and less people will be able to afford their homes with multiple financial institutions having basically no one left to sell them because guess what? A lot of people are already tapped out as it is. If you are one of the millions on a journey toward the American dream of owning your own home, then you probably already know it's tough out there. This week, the average interest rate on a 30-year mortgage climbed to 7.48%, the highest level since November 2000. It is very, very freaking hard to buy a house. Rates have nearly tripled in the span of just a couple of years from the lows seen during the pandemic. Back in January 2021, they dipped to 2.65%. That climb came as the Federal Reserve aggressively hiked interest rates to tame inflation, which ballooned above 9% last summer. But even as overall inflation has cooled and the Fed has slowed its efforts, mortgage rates have continued to climb, a lingering problem for both house hunters and would-be sellers who are opting to stay put. The sellers are really in the driver's seat right now. The problem is they don't want to drive. They likely have a rate that's either 4% or below, and so they're in what we call the golden handcuffs. So how long will interest rates stay this high? No one has a crystal ball. We don't know when rates will pull back again. It really all just depends on inflation. Now, if we go back to Canada and comparing it to the highs in March of last year, the benchmark price, it's now slid by are you guys ready for this? 14.2% or $135,300. And let me tell you guys, things are only heating up right now because they're nowhere near the bottom. How do I know this? Well, their home sales are dropping right now as their supply is going up. And I know that this is one of the best communities out there. So I know for a fact that you guys understand what this means, but just in case you're new here, low demand and high supply can only mean one thing, lower prices. Now, if you're looking to buy a home, your new home, or heck, maybe you're in the market to get a fleet of rentals that you can earn money from, maybe generate some passive income. Who knows? I'm not really sure what your personal situation is, but I'm telling you guys that within a year, millionaires are probably going to be made and they're going to be using the housing market to do it. But what are your thoughts on this? Are you planning to get a home or are you looking to invest in a crash? Make sure you guys let me know down in the comment section down below. And before I go, I just want to thank you guys for keeping me company today. Thank you for dropping a like for the video. If you want more money-making opportunities, definitely hit me up with the comment section down below. I would love to send you some free information on how to make that happen. Anyway, guys, thanks for subscribing, and I'm going to see you guys on the next one.